Hey, I'm Brock Archer with Advanced Extrication. Welcome to our Extrication Minutes videos every Tuesday on Fire Engineering. This week, we're gonna talk about inflation cylinders and when it's appropriate to cut them. Okay, so this week we're gonna talk about inflation cylinders. Before we get started, a quick shout out to Barrow County, Georgia. Thanks for the shirt, brothers, I appreciate it. So inflation cylinders have been a concern for a long time now, for at least 15 years. And when we talk about inflation cylinders, what we always teach and what we always are told is we never cut an inflation cylinder. Well, that's not always true. I'm gonna tell you when it's appropriate to cut an inflation cylinder. But first, let's talk about the various locations where we may find an inflation cylinder and why it's important that we don't cut the inflation cylinders with our power rescue cutters. Now, first of all, an inflation cylinder is high pressure stored gas, like this. Now the gas is stored in this cylinder and then the valve at the tip of the inflator opens up when the airbag needs to be deployed and of course, fills the airbag to protect the occupants. We use, we use uh, inflation cylinders in curtain airbags, in passenger front airbags, in door airbags, on and on and on, seat airbags, almost every airbag with the exception of the steering wheel, and now there is even a case where we have a steering wheel bag inflation cylinder driven. In almost all airbags, we have inflation cylinders being used. So the hazard to rescuers is simple. If we cut an inflation cylinder with a power rescue cutter, an inflation cylinder that hasn't been deployed, we run the risk of that inflation cylinder when being cut, building pressure as our, as our cutter squishes the, as it, as it crushes the inflation cylinder, we run the risk of it actually breaking into two and a piece of the inflation cylinder becoming a projectile and injuring an occupant of a vehicle or one of the rescuers. It's a real risk and we've had several documented incidents of rescuers being injured by inflation cylinders. Now, if the inflation cylinder has, has been discharged, we're safe to cut that inflation cylinder. Now that can be pretty tough to determine. In some cases, on curtain airbags, we actually have two inflators that operate to inflate one airbag. So in cases like that, we can't be sure that both inflators have in fact discharged and filled the airbag. So we need to be really careful about when we cut a inflation cylinder, even if we suspect that it's discharged into the airbag. So where do we find inflation cylinders? Well, we can find them inside the airbag. That's often the case on passenger front bags or even on side seat airbags. We may find it inside the airbag on some door airbags. So we may find that inflation cylinder inside the airbag itself. Now it may be inside the airbag as well on a curtain or roof bag. We occasionally will find the inflation cylinder inside the curtain bag. That's why it's not good enough to just visually examine a curtain bag that is undeployed before we cut it. We actually need to palpate that bag to make sure there's no inflation cylinder where we're gonna be making our cut. So we may find them in the roof and there's just a ton of locations in the roof of the vehicle that we may find them. We may find the inflation cylinder in the quarter panel of the vehicle on some vehicles where we have only two doors but a second row seat. We may find the inflation cylinder in the speaker deck of the vehicle. Just about anywhere you could imagine. Here on the BMWs, we often find the inflation cylinder in the dashboard at the base of the A pillar. So inflation cylinders are everywhere and we wanna make sure that we we reveal any interior area that we're gonna cut or crush before doing so to check for inflation cylinders and all hazards that we may come across. Now, when is it appropriate to cut an airbag? Well, really the question is, what is it appropriate to cut an airbag inflation cylinder with? 
And a Sawzall is a great tool for cutting an inflation cylinder that is charged. Now it's important to wear eye protection and to protect our occupants' eyes. Because while we cut an inflation cylinder with a Sawzall, we do have the release of high pressure gra gas, which could of course stir up particulate matter in the vehicle and send small projectiles like dust and dirt into the eyes of our occupants or ourselves as rescuers. But the, but the auto dismantling industry has proven to us that we can cut inflation cylinders with a Sawzall without any real hazards. How do we know this? Well, the largest auto dismantler in the world cuts hundreds of inflation cylinders every single day and they have zero reported injuries when doing so and that's because they utilize a Sawzall. So if you're in a situation where you absolutely have to cut an inflation cylinder, do so using your Sawzall. Again, protect your eyes and the occupants' eyes, but other than that, we're safe to cut them with a Sawzall. And that's because we're not crushing that inflation cylinder and increasing the pressure and then having that cylinder break apart where we have the risk of a projectile. We're releasing the gas with a small cut. As soon as that Sawzall blade passes through the, the outer shell of that inflation cylinder, the gas is released and then rendering it safe for us to move on. After that, we can cut it with anything that we like. So consider that with your inflation cylinders. Know that the hazards are inside the vehicle in all locations, almost anywhere you can imagine, you can find a hazard in a vehicle and inflation cylinders are just one of those. Thanks for watching this Extrication Minutes video. I'm Brock Archer. Take care and be safe.